Yep. 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 No, Tim, 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 can I just jump in? I'm just recording this week's video. You can be free in about an hour's time. Can I be back? Lovely. I'll speak to you then, Tim. Cheers. Bye. Always phones at the wrong time. That that was just Tim Cook on the phone. He calls me every now and again. We're the best of buds, you know. We've known each other years. He just rang to let me know what's coming along on iPhone 15, but we'll get onto that in a bit. Welcome back, guys. I hope you've had a great week. I don't know about you, but all I keep seeing when I flick through my homepage feed here on YouTube is creators talking about walking away from iPhone and switching over to Samsung. Hands up, I've never used an Android. In fact, show my age here, the only other phone I've ever owned apart from an iPhone was a couple of Blackberries. Who remembers those? So I've not owned or used a Samsung or any kind of Android phone. So I'm not going to sit here and tear them to shreds. Nope, I'm going to tell you why I stay by phone and why I'm probably more committed to them now than ever before. I'm not saying iPhones are perfect or faultless, but for a number of reasons, they just work for me. I'm going to take a good look at this, my iPhone 14 Pro that I've had since the first weekend it was launched last September. I'll look at the good and the bad parts. So although that's actually unfair, I don't think any phones are bad now. Let's just say the bits I'm less keen on. Then we'll get around to finding out what, uh, what Tim just called to tell me about is coming along on this year's iPhone 15, checking out all the latest stories and rumors that are doing the rounds. The schedule and pattern this year for product looks as if it could be all over the place. The will they, won't they over the spring event? The when will they over the headset? And the will they ever with the Mac Pro is leaving more questions rather than answers right now about what we're actually gonna get this year. But one thing is for sure, we will be getting a new iPhone 15 in the fall, but using history as our teacher, what are the areas that they need to work on before that's released? Well, for starters, the front. With ceramic glass shield as standard on all iPhone 14s, they should be almost indestructible, yet within days of me using mine, it got scratched. I've never used screen protectors on any of my phones before, and yet they've all been scratch free after a couple of years of use. So what's going on with the glass on this one? How has the glass on yours stood up? Is it an issue? or was I just unlucky? Size-wise, I wanted to get a Pro Max just because I like big screens, no matter what I'm doing. That's why I bought the studio display and there's a card floating somewhere above me and you can click on that to watch a video I made about the studio display. But I couldn't get a Pro Max that first weekend, so I ended up with the Pro. On reflection, that bit of bad luck has probably turned out to be a good thing. The size of the Pro is peachy perfect. As I'm normally around a Mac, I hardly ever use the phone to work on or even surf on. It's just there as a hub to everything else. So to give up any more pocket size would have been a waste. They're weighty enough as they are. So we've got the Pro Max, it would have been even heavier and even more cumbersome. The ProMotion screen gets a big yes from me. Using a phone now that's not ProMotion feels a real step back in time. On my Macs, ProMotion isn't as noticeable. On the phone, I absolutely Love it. And speaking of the screen, all that clamor for the always on display ended up being a bit of a wet weekend, right? I ran with it early on, but found it was hitting the battery harder than I expected. And I just found it plain irritating too. The fix that came along offered some improvement. So I turned it back on again and it's running now in it's sort of dimmed down or dumbed down state for now at least. The battery life is one of the phone's weaknesses. I make it through the day on a single charge, but considering how much of the day it's just on standby and sitting on the desk, I'd have expected it to have more juice left than it does. On days when I'm traveling and away from the charger, then I really do notice how quickly it drains down. Dynamic Island rarely even crosses my mind. I know this year, more apps and developers look like they're coming on board with it, but honestly, I don't know about you, but I rarely even think about it, let alone use it. Very, very rarely, I'll tap on it to bring up a podcast or track I'm listening to. But honestly, if that happens as often as once a week, I'd be surprised. I probably overdid the amount of storage I bought on this phone, although in my defense, I thought at the time I'd need it. The main reason I bought it was for the 4K Pro Res video it could shoot. I had one arm behind my back until then, shooting all the videos for this channel on a basic iPhone 12, not even a Pro. I'd never owned a camera, so I thought I'd get the 14 Pro as this channel's main camera. The video quality is stunning. This was the first Pro phone that I'd owned and the video quality blew me away. So thinking this was gonna be the main camera for the channel and knowing how big those files were gonna be, and they really are big, I went with one terabyte of storage, which brings me to another bugbear. Getting those large video files from the phone, all the cutaway shots you see like this are shot on the 14 Pro. That means it's recording ProRes all the time I'm recording the main A-roll, typically 15 minutes or so. At the end, that ProRes file is way too large to airdrop 
And on the data speeds I've got, it would take a month of Sundays for it to upload to the Photos app and then download it via the cloud on my Mac. Oddly though, and completely unplanned, just after I got the phone, I bought this Canon 90D for my buddy Alex. So all the storage is, um, well, uh, going to waste. Oh well, you live and learn. And speaking of Alex, don't forget, we record a podcast together. Minus 16 is what it's called, and we are recording the next one in just a few hours' time. It'll be up over the weekend, so make sure you check that out on YouTube, or you can also find it as an audio podcast on Spotify and on Apple Podcasts. And this past week, I can now say thank you and change the broken record. We finally passed that 1,000 sub barrier. It means so much to me. It makes an awful difference to a channel of my size. And I can only thank you for sticking with me for the past 18 months or so. I think it was September 21 that I started uploading weekly videos. And finally, finally we've got there. And it's all down to you guys. Thank you for sticking with me. Your patience has been fantastic. And we are building a wonderful community here. But don't forget, it's not time to take the foot off the gas yet. If you are enjoying these videos, finding them fun, finding them useful, then it's time to absolutely sort of button down and make sure that we carry on making this channel grow. And the ways of doing that is in your hands, really. I've got the simple part. I just sit here record and talk to a camera. That's all I do. The power is in your hands. You've got the magic. If you're enjoying these videos, make sure you hit sub and like. Liking it means that YouTube will share out to more people that aren't yet watching the video so the channel can grow even quicker. And every single sub honestly makes a huge difference to me. So if you're enjoying the videos, help me out, drop a sub, get a like on the video, and let's keep this channel growing. Thanks for everything so far. Look, first thousand done. The next 25,000 to come. The photo side of the cam was equally impressive. The amount of data you capture shooting in Pro War is epic. In Lightroom, you've got all this data that you can play with in post. Results are possibly a little bit too processed, but I'm being super picky. The power you have in your pocket with this camera sub is, well, something we could have only dreamt of a few short years back. We are living in lush times. The 14 has been a solid phone for me over these past six months. Dodgy battery life has been its biggest letdown, but outside of that, the speed, functionality, power and convenience it brings to my day is its real strength. Don't worry, I haven't forgotten about telling you why I won't be switching from iPhone, but first, let's check out what Tim told me we'll be getting on iPhone 15 this September. I mean, it's from Tim, so it must be true, right? Speaking to that issue of data transfer first, this year all models will get USB-C, but be careful, the shape of the port doesn't tell the full story. The two cheaper phones, geez, it sticks in the throat to say cheaper when it's an $800 phone, but you know what I mean. They'll have a USB-C port, all right, but only at speeds of the current Lightning port, but that'll be enough to keep them in line with the new EU regs that are coming along. The two Pro phones will have the much quicker Thunderbolt 3 ports on them, though. That should help with getting ProRes files off the phone, I guess, but I'll wait until I get my hands on one before passing judgment. Is there a technical reason or a space issue why we couldn't have a micro SD card slot on the Pro phones? If they are making them with the Pros in mind and giving them this ability to shoot 4K 30fps video, they need to make this file transfer issue a priority. Certainly more than they have done so far. We need a Pro workflow to go with the profiles. The obsession with bezels continues and judging on various images we've seen on Mac rumors, the bezels on the Pro phones look as if they'll be much slimmer than mine. Also, the edge will be more curvy on the 15, bringing it in line with the new MacBooks and the Apple Watch. The camera, as you'd expect, is making another step forward on the 15 Pros, but not only is the divide between the non-Pro and Pro phones getting ever wider, now there'll be a line in the sand between the two Pro phones. Although both phones will include telephoto lens technology as part of their three camera array, only the iPhone 15 Pro Max will have a periscope lens that will enable 6x optical zoom. Partly in their defense, this could be because of the internal jigging about they'll have to do to fit the periscope mechanism in the phone in the first place. A periscope lens system generally uses a primary lens to capture a photo with an angled mirror or prism reflecting the light 90 degrees towards a second lens that sends the image to the sensor. Are you following me? I'm going to set homework at the end of the video. <laughs> As that image sensor and secondary lens are positioned sideways to extend focal length, it's that which takes up valuable space. So maybe there just wasn't enough physical space in the Pro to facilitate the periscope lens. The iPhone 15 Pro and Pro Max will be using the three nanometer process A17 chip. But as I said last week, possibly 
that three nanometer chip will actually have already made its debut in the new MacBook Airs by then. It's expected to improve processing performance by 10 to 15% while also reducing power consumption by up to 30%. So hopefully that will help with battery life. But because the three nanometer chips are priced to make, the A17 chip will only be available in Apple's iPhone 15 Pro models in 2023. Don't forget, this is what Tim just told me just moments ago, so you know it's true. To help offset some of the weight I mentioned, a titanium chassis is coming to the Pros too. Compared to stainless steel, titanium is lighter and stronger, but it's also more expensive because it's harder to work with. The final weight will depend on the alloy that Apple use, as obviously the devices won't be made entirely and purely from titanium. There was a story a few weeks back saying that red will be the new color this year, but not a shocking red, instead more of a classy burgundy or maroon red that could look lovely and would probably be the color I plump for if I swap out this year. Other changes include the switch from physical to haptic feedback solid state buttons, which should last longer as there are no moving parts, and also be improvements to LiDAR scanner, more RAM and quicker Wi-Fi. Like I said earlier, you can't really buy a new phone that's bad, certainly not from the main place. Equally, no phone for the foreseeable future is going to want changing, assuming you have a phone from say the last two or three years. Nearly all the changes I've mentioned today are good, solid, incremental changes but none that will make the 15 that much different from the 14. We are in an age of great tech, so just spend wisely and don't be forced to change for change's sake. So does the fact I'm not interested in trying out the Samsung S23, maybe a fanboy or just plain blinkered? Nope, not at all. The iPhone is at the head of the stack when it comes to my entire Apple life. The iPhone can double up as a remote control and even a keyboard for my Apple TV. It hooks up to my Apple Watch and captures my sleep and activity data. It has handoffs to the HomePods and FaceTime calls to the Mac. There's AirDrop, continuity camera and image capture. I'm just happy with what iPhone does for me. It works, it suits me and I'm happy with it. So why trade all that in? I'm more Apple reminders, notes, pages and numbers than I am Google Docs. I'm more iCloud than Google Drive. I'm not for a moment saying that you shouldn't take a look at Samsung or Android phones. I'm sure they're great if they work for you. But for me, it would just be too big of a 360 degree handbrake turn. It would have too many ripple effects to make me tempted. Whether I like it or not, Apple has got a hold of me, but that's just me and my story. What about you? I'd love to know if you've walked away from Apple recently and why, and what was that lifestyle switch like? Guys, as ever, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this week's video. I hope you found it fun. Don't forget, if you have and you made it this far through and enjoyed it, that sub really would help me and the channel out. On the screen now should be another couple of videos for you to watch, one chosen by me and the other by the lovely guys at YouTube. Guys, Thanks once again. I'll be back with you next week. Cheers, and I'll see you then.